this morning for these awesome testimonies that we have heard. They are the doings of the Lord. They are marvelous in our eyes. Let our voices of gratitude be heard on high this morning as we give glory and praise unto the name of the Lord. Give praise to his name. Give glory to his name. Appreciate him and celebrate his faithfulness. Lord, we have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. We bless your name, Lord. We celebrate your faithfulness. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all adoration. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Also, thank him for one more time answering all of our prayers. Yes, let's give him the glory and the honor that is due unto him. Our God is faithful, is worthy of all the praise. Father, we have come to give you thanks. Now ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, we are before you to hear from you today. Speak to us today by your word. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege and blessing of being in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies we have heard. These are your doings, and they are marvelous in our eyes. Lord, for all of the answers, one more time we say we are grateful. We give you all the praise and glory. And now, Lord, we are before your word. Speak to us today, and by your word, let everyone be changed and transformed. We give you the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand, and please, you may be seated in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. By way of introduction this morning, it's important to recognize that giving thanks in everything in scriptures is shown to us as the will of God. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18, the Bible tells us, in everything give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And the scripture makes it clear to us that when the will of God is done, we are able to obtain the promise. If you like, we are able to see prophecies fulfilled. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36, it says you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. The protocol, therefore, for anyone to see the promise fulfilled or prophecies fulfilled is to engage the will of God, which is thanksgiving. That goes to show us, therefore, that thanksgiving is non-negotiable in our quest to see prophecies fulfilled. Furthermore, we discover from scriptures that thanksgiving triggers supernatural church growth. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19, it says, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. We we'll find a practical example of this in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. They were praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So where thanksgiving is present, church growth is naturally present. That is why our exhortation for this week is captioned, engaging the power of thanksgiving towards fulfillment of prophecy. Engaging the power of thanksgiving towards fulfillment of prophecy. And this morning, we are going to look specifically at this fact. Biblically, prayer is a covenant requirement to see prophecies fulfilled. The Bible makes clear to us in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. It says there, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies that went before thee, that thou mightest war a good warfare. So prophecies are not to be watched, but to be warred with. We war with them to see them come to pass. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 24, we have a very clear picture painted to us there. The Bible makes us to understand. It says, rise up, take up your journey, go over the river Arnon. 
He says, and because I have given you see on the Amorite and his land, but begin to contend with him in battle. I have given him to you, but there is a process through which you will take delivery of what I have given. And that is the process of spiritual warfare. That's what we do in prayer. In prayer, we are warring with the prophecy to see the prophecy come to pass. But we discover that prayer can never be complete or deliver without thanksgiving. It takes thanksgiving for our prayers to deliver. They do not qualify for answers until they are facilitated by thanksgiving. That is why it's not enough to pray. It's not enough just to call upon the name of the Lord for what we desire. We must facilitate our prayers by thanksgiving. In the book of Philippians 4, the Bible tells us in verse 6, it says, be anxious or be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known unto God. So it means that until thanksgiving is included, the answer is not in view. We must recognize, therefore, that the battle or the warfare of prayer cannot be perfected without thanksgiving. Appreciation and thanksgiving is what assures us of responses to our prayers. If you look at the model of prayer that Jesus taught us in the book of Matthew chapter 6, beginning from verse 9 down to verse 13, you will see the power of thanksgiving when it comes to the altar of prayer. It says, after this manner you are to pray, start by saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That is, begin with thanksgiving. And then he begins to go through the process of prayer, the different requests, the advancement of the kingdom, the desires of our hearts. And then as we get to the conclusion of the prayer, in verse 12 and verse 13, we begin to see again, it facilitated with thanksgiving. It says in verse, verse 13, Matthew 6, 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. The conclusion. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. So begin with thanksgiving and exit with thanksgiving. In the book of Psalm chapter 100 and verse 4, this is how the Bible puts it. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. The entry to God is gratitude. The exit from God is gratitude. If you want to access God to get what you desire, you need thanks. If you want to exit from God with what you desire in your hand, you need thanks. You and I both know that if you go to any shop and you do not have a receipt and you are walking out of the shop with the goods, you are going to be accosted on your way out. You see, you can enter where God is with gratitude and pick what you want from what God has supplied. But if you are going to carry it out with you into your daily life, you also need thanksgiving. So thanksgiving is a vital necessity to see any prophecy fulfilled. If the desires of our heart will be delivered into our hands, then thanksgiving is a vital necessity. Shout hallelujah. When we look through the scripture, we discover that we see this thanksgiving manifesting as the instrument for the fulfillment of prophecy. Let's take the example of Abraham in scriptures. In the book of Genesis chapter 15, the Bible tells us from verse 13 and, verse 13 and verse 14. Genesis 15, verses 13 and verse 14. It says, know that of a surety, he said, thy seed shall be a stranger in, the, in a land that is not theirs. Now, this is God speaking to Abraham at a point where Abraham was childless. He was an old man, but with one prophecy hanging on his life. The prophecy was that there was going to be a child that God was going to give to him. And he was speaking to him about the generations that will come from this child. Say with me prophecy. Now, it was not yet fulfilled. If you look at the beginning of Genesis 15, Abraham was saying, Lord, I have no child. I have all these prophecies, all, all, all these properties. Only my servant is there to inherit it all. And God was saying, no, you will have a seed. And now I'm telling you about the generations that will come from that seed. Now, in Romans chapter 4, we see how did this prophecy really come to pass? How did this prophecy really get fulfilled in the life of Abraham? In the book of Romans chapter 4, verse 18 down to verse 20, we have this clear picture. He said, against hope, he believed in hope, that he may become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. 
Now, in verse, verse 19, he said, Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body that was now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He said, But he staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith. What was he doing there? Giving glory to God. He was celebrating God. And what came out of the celebration? The celebration brought about the manifestation of the promise. That's why we get to Genesis 21, and then the Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. Prophecy came to pass. He did unto Sarah as he had spoken. He says, Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in, her, in his old age. At the said time which the Lord has spoken. We just heard the testimony of one who for 13 years was called barren. Prophetic word came and the, one night with the king and child manifested as he had said. I'd like us to know that everything God has said will surely come to pass. All we need to do is to engage the force of thanksgiving. We have prayed, we have engaged supplication, we have engaged intercession. Now engage appreciation. As we begin to appreciate God, watch every prophetic word that God has spoken over your life and over us as a commission come to pass speedily in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, what you and I require is a heart of genuine thanksgiving. We have been told this is a week of answers. I see answers rushing in your direction. Will you rise on your feet with me this morning and lift up your hand before the Lord and seek God for grace? Lord, I receive that grace for gratitude, that garment of praise, that oil of joy to sustain my gratitude at all times. I receive it this morning. I receive it this morning. Receive it right now in faith. Receive it right now in faith. Lift up your two hands and thank God for answers to your prayers. Thank God for answers to your questions. Thank God for leading the way forward in all areas for you. Celebrate his faithfulness in the name of Jesus. Amen. A week of answers or harvest of answers to prayers must be a week of genuine thanksgiving. Because answers will meet, must meet us thanking God. Amen. We are going to celebrate him in some praise with a heart of gratitude. Hallelujah. We are saying thank you. Amen. I say thank you, ha, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you. Everybody saying thank you, ha, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We are saying thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Everybody saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are saying thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Everybody say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give a praise. Everybody say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are saying thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Everybody saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, we've got to say, we've got to say, all we have to say. We have got to say, we've got to say, all we have to say. Yes. Got to say for answer prayers. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we have to say yes. We have got to say. We have got to say. Oh, we have to say yes. We have got to say for breaking limits. Oh, we have to say. We have got to say. We have got to say. We are saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, 
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Yes, I said I do I Yes, I said I do I said I do I said I said I do I said I I said I Lift up your hands. Give Jesus the biggest clap of praise. Amen. As we all commit ourselves to genuine thanksgiving, on all prayer lines we prayed in those 21 days of prayer and fasting, the answers will start dropping. Yeah. It's after you have done the will of God, then you are qualified to obtain the promise. And this is the will of God. In everything, give thanks. As we are giving thanks, those issues, no matter what they may appear to be, will start surrendering to the authority of scriptures. So be thankful. Be thankful. Nobody murmurs. Nobody complains. Don't rob yourself of delivery of answers to your prayers. They murmur and they provoke God anger. They provoke the destroyer. No devil will destroy answer to your prayers. <laughs> Please stay with a heart of gratitude. Let it become your new addiction. And watch how God begins to confirm every prayer you have prayed with undeniable testimonies that shall be your experience how many enjoy God's presence amen in those 21 days well that presence will abide with you all the days of your life all through this year you won't miss his presence in the day in the night God's presence will envelope you in the name of Jesus Christ how many believe that all the prayers we prayed concerning the church, God has answered? How many believe in the limit-breaking order of growth this year? Amen. How many are sure they won't know sickness anymore? How many are sure they won't know oppression or devil anymore? Lift up your two hands. And I release that grace for continuous attitude of gratitude upon everyone's life. All through this week and beyond. Yeah. Welcome to your week of harvest of answers to prayers. Yeah. It shall deliver undeniable results in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. Lift up those two hands and give him thanks. Celebrate him. Speak to the day. Here I come ready for delivery of answers to my prayers with the heart of gratitude I believe give him thanks give thanks to God give him praise give him glory for the answers that await you today celebrate him is worthy of praise Glorify his name. Give honor unto him. Father, we say thank you. 
Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Let's share the goodness together in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. It is my year of breaking limits. Then what eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations, amen and amen. Congratulations, somebody as you go, be blessed.